topic for today is component level design guidelines. Now when we choose object oriented software engineering approach, component level design focuses on elaboration of problem domain specific classes and definition and refinement of infrastructure classes contained in the requirement. Now we have seen the design principles in the last video. So in addition to the design principles, a set of pragmatic design guidelines can be applied as component level design proceeds. These guidelines apply to the components, their interfaces and the dependencies and inheritance characteristics that have an impact on the resultant design. In today's video, we will discuss the component level design guidelines. Let us start. Welcome to our channel Engineering and Technology for You. If you are not subscribed to our channel, kindly subscribe and press the bell icon so that you get notifications for our future video. The topic for today is component level design guidelines. Let us start with the introduction. The component level design draws in information developed as a part of requirements model and represented as a part of the architecture. So the requirements model we are transforming into a representation of the architectural model and after that the component level design starts. So when we are choosing the object oriented software engineering approach then at that time the component level design focuses on elaboration of classes which are in the problem domain and definition and refinement of infrastructure classes contained in the requirements model. So as per the requirements model, we will have to say design the classes as per the problem domain and the infrastructure classes as per the requirement model say the different cases in the requirement model they are converted into the infrastructure or the scenarios they are also uh, converted into infrastructure so the detailed description of attributes then operations and interfaces used by these classes is the design detail required as we go through the construction so when we are doing this then we follow certain principles we have seen the principles in the last video now in addition to these principles a set of practical or pragmatic design guidelines can be applied as component level design proceeds. So these guidelines apply to components, their interfaces and the dependencies and inheritance characteristics. So that have an impact on the resultant design. So let us see one by one the guidelines for components and interfaces and dependencies and inheritance. Now let us see the component guidelines. The first is regarding the naming convention. So naming convention should be established for components that are specified as a part of architectural model. And then defined and elaborated as a part of component level model. That means uh, when we are naming the classes at that time we should use the naming convention so that uh, we are defining the architectural model first and then we go to the different component level model. Then second guideline 
so here architectural component name should be drawn from the problem domain and should have meaning to all the stakeholders who view the architectural model that means when we are naming the architectural component such as the class so at that time we should give uh, name to the class in such a way that it is all the stakeholders can understand it so for example class name floor plan so this floor plan is meaningful to everyone reading it irrespective of the uh, technical background so the classes should be named properly that is the second guideline then third guideline is the infrastructure components or elaborated component level classes should be named to reflect the implementation specific mean just now we have talked about the architectural level component that is the uh, architecture level classes so they should be uh, named in a simple way whereas the infrastructure components or the component level classes they should be named in such a way that it should reflect the implementation specific so here for example now if we are using link list as a managed part of the uh, floor plan then we can use the manage list function that is more appropriate manage list so that will uh, manage the link list so that is how we have to uh, follow the naming convention then the fourth guideline you can choose the use stereotype names to identify the nature of company say for example infrastructure now this is a common name can be used to identify the infrastructure company similarly database can be used to identify a database component or uh, a more design or other entire system related to database then table table can be used to identify table within a so in this way you should do then interface guidelines so interface guidelines provide important information about communication and collaboration see here we know the open close principle so we have to achieve it so for that the communication and collaboration is important because what does the principle say it is say uh, related to the extension and modification so when we are uh, trying to achieve that at that time uh, for a communication and collaboration will be possible. so here the unfettered or uh, a free hand representation of interfaces tend to complicate the component so we should not go for the free hand or autonomous representation of diagram so we should follow certain guide first guideline is lollipop representation of interface should be used in lieu of more formal uml box and dash arrow approach so generally we use the uh, uml boxes and dash arrows but instead of that we should go for a graphical representation uh, resembling a lollipop so lollipop has uh, a 
uh, heart circle and then there is a stick so that represents motion so when we are drawing complex diagrams at that time the interfaces will be represented with the lollipop replacement then second guideline is for consistency so interfaces should flow from left to right the so left hand side of the component block so always all the interfaces should flow from left hand side of the component block for all the components so that there is a consistency then the third guideline only those interfaces that are relevant to the component under consideration should be shown so even if more interfaces are available they should not be shown all should not be shown only those which are relevant to the component under so these are the three interface guidelines so these recommendations are intended to simplify the visual nature of uml component so uh, when we are representing the component in the form of diagram we should follow this for interface then the last part is the dependencies and inheritance guideline so first guideline for this is for improved readability so we should model from left to right that is the dependencies should be modeled from left to right and inheritance when we are modeling inheritance we should take the derived classes uh that is at the bottom and uh, base classes to the top then the second guideline so the interdependencies should be represented via not via the component to component that is the second guide and the third guideline is the uh got to follow the philosophy of OCP that is uh, the open close principle in the open close principle component should be open for extension and close for modification that is the open close principle so you should follow this philosophy so that the system becomes easy for because the components if you are they are open for extension and close for modification the code is not going to change so that will be easy for so with this we come to the end of this video if you have any queries you can contact me facebook twitter gmail or instagram or you can visit the website and then if you like the video press the like button share with your friends and subscribe to our channel engineering and technology for you and don't forget to press the bell icon so that you get notifications for our future so do this because that will motivate us to do better video and thanks for watching have a nice day.